Hello everybody and welcome back to Twilight Princess. This is going to be the start of some side questing stuff, so be prepared for a lot of in-between stuff to break up the main story. I am back, of course, in beautiful Lake Hylia, and I've decided to do this uh, particular- or get this particular heart piece, rather, because this can actually probably take me a whole video, and it actually might. Um, after you get bombs, you'll be able to do this. If Link can climb a ladder, that would be absolutely fantastic. This is actually Lake Hylia, um, not Upper Zora River or Zora's Domain, for anybody who's wondering or is confused. And if you climb up that ladder over there, um, just by where Fier has his little, um, I guess, game set up, you can come over to this wall and you can bomb it. So let's let it blow up. And there's going to be a cave, a very, very, very very long cave, so be prepared. Let's go. Alright, so before coming in here, of course, I suggest having um, lantern oil, which is why I'm doing this now, because I actually have lantern oil on me. Might as well use it up, especially once I get later into the game as well. Might want to use my bottle for something else, um, but you're obviously going to need your lantern and quite a few bombs for this area, too. Um, there's usually going to be about two or three walls to blow up. One is going to be a dead end. One's usually going to be one with like a small chest, and one's going to be the way to go next. Um, so this one, for example, has like a few little tiny keys, and um, then I think there's a little mini chest there. Let's get rid of the keys first. And this is not only a good area uh, to get a heart piece, which is going to be the prize at the end, but it's also a great area to get a bunch of rupees. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to fit all of the rupees we find in this place um, in my bag, because trust me, there is a lot of rupees in this area. So, um, I think you can scoop up those chews if you want. I truthfully don't know uh, what type of um, chew jelly they have, like what properties it gives you, but I'm not like, going to really bother, because I don't even think I have a free bottle. So... Uh, I think that's our next way to go, actually. And there's a little tiny chest here. With a red ruby. So, it's a pretty uh, predictable sort of pattern. You basically uh, come through one chamber, fight a bunch of enemies, uh, use, a, use some bombs, and things like that. Now, you gotta be really careful in this cave, I forgot to mention, because if you uh, fall down a cliff or you die or something, you have to start the entire cave all over again. It's like, no mercy, no siree. And I think while I'm here, I will get the souls and then I will just, uh, like, make a video uh, with all the souls in it later. Because I really don't want to have to come back to this area. It's a big pain in the ass. I haven't really gone over the whole soul collecting thing. Um, but we remember, of course, Giovanni asked us to get these souls. Um, and we can only get them as Wolf Link. We have to use our senses... Um, and when we have 20 of them, we were supposed to go back to Giovanni. Now, what Giovanni didn't tell you is that there's actually 60 pull souls. Yeah, 60, yeah. Way to not tell Link uh, something very important. I would say that's a pretty important detail. Like, by the way, did I mention that there's actually 60 pull souls? Oh, I didn't? Well, there's 60 pull souls. Yeah, thanks. We're only going to worry about 20 right now. And I'm just going to pick these up as I go because, like I said, this cave is just very long and I really don't want to have to come back here. You need to be careful when walking over these sections because, like I said, if you fall down um, that area, you have to actually have to go back to the start of the cave. The game doesn't, like, start you at, like, a checkpoint or something, so you got to be watching out. And luckily, Lantern Whale seems to go, like, a pretty long ways in this game. And there's a Beemos, and I don't want it to hit me, so... I turn off my lantern when I don't need it, but I apologize for you guys watching the video because I realize it's probably like insanely dark and you can't see anything right now. And I also insanely cannot hit this freaking Beemos. There we go. And if I could, then you guys wouldn't have to sit in darkness for so long. Ah, let's just combine the two. Why not? And I do believe that sound that's making noises, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, is uh, telling me that my lantern is a little on oil and I should probably refill it or that I should be aware that I'm going to be in complete darkness soon, so. Anyways, continue on here. Hopefully my lantern doesn't run out of oil and if it does, I can just restock. Um, this actually got me 
the first time I was kind of jumping through here. Maybe it's not this area I'm thinking of, but there's an area where you have to like jump down a bunch of cliffs and there's actually like a hole you can fall into. And I definitely like fell into the hole and had to go back all the way through and I was completely infuriated. So you might want to check your camera angles before you jump, even if it really doesn't seem like there's much there. Here, if you light two lanterns, you'll actually get a big treasure chest. So, there's not just little tiny rupees like tens and twenties, there's some bigger ones in here for you. Alright. Let's bring out some more bombs. Luckily, I have lots of bombs! If I run out of bombs, I'm gonna be pissed, but I really don't think that I will. I think I will be alright. I'm sure there's like a chest with some bombs here somewhere, or an enemy that dropped bombs or something. And there's a whopping 100 rupees in here, so I'm really glad I got that wallet upgrade from Agatha, because I'm now up to 485 rupees, whereas before I could only carry 200. So, go ahead and move that total up to like 500, so we got 100 more rupees to carry. Um, we don't really honestly use rupees for much in this game until later on, so... It's not really a whole lot of point in, like, a crap ton of rupee collecting or anything, but whatever. As a Dodongo, they kind of switch it up too, they kind of give you, like, a bunch of different enemies and stuff. Which, like, which I guess is, like, kinda nice in a way, it's just like, oh yeah, hey, kind of refreshing to see enemies and such and so forth. Um, that's a portal back if you don't feel like being in this area anymore, or you were having a hard time, or you ran out of bombs, or, you know, whatever it might be, you can go back, which is kinda nice kind of indicates this is like the halfway mark which yay we've been in here for almost seven minutes and this is only the halfway mark yeah sorry guys I told you this is long cave is long I think it's right here actually uh, this little section here you gotta be really careful those little bridges and then I think I jumped right into that hole yeah that's exactly what I did I jumped right into that hole and had to start all over again and I was like really game why do you hate me? I, I don't understand why we don't get along. It's just... It's just not... It's it's very impolite of you. And for some reason, the Beemoses in this game are really, really slow. Um, the ones in Wind Waker would have absolutely just obliterated me by the by that point. If you saw my Wind Waker playthrough. Those Beemos are damn fast. And ruthless? You bet your butt that they are blow up these three caverns. What else do we got? More keys? Oh, wonderful, because I love me some keys. Let me tell ya. Can never get enough. More rupees? Oh no, some arrows. Sweet. At least they're kind of supplying us with some stuff too. It gets a little boring just getting rupees all the time. Is this gonna be rupees? Let's see. What's in here? 50 rupees. Awesome. Alright. Keep on moving. More of the the enemies from the mines. They're like, they're like, uh, fire slugs or something? I don't really know what to call them. I'm sure they have an official name that I'm just not aware of slash too ignorant to look up slash care about. Another hole you gotta watch out for. And of course, I think you can also like shoot these guys down with an arrow if you wanted, just like you were doing in the Goron mines, but really there's only a few of them and you can get close enough to the point where they're not gonna really cause you a lot of danger or anything. And my lantern is almost out of oil again. I'm not doing very good on the lantern conservation, but I, wa I didn't want to do it for the video. I wouldn't practice when I did this cave. I was kind of, you know, like, conserving my lantern. But if you guys can't see anything, then why would you watch the video, right? All right, so let's get this uh, second pole soul in this cave. Luckily, these pole souls are really easy to get because these poles only really take, I think, about two hits, so... That's not too bad, so. Man, being able to transform is so utterly convenient, I gotta say. Convenience is a wonderful and beautiful thing. Especially since I love being regular Link so much, but I know that being Wolf Link is sometimes necessary. It's a good balance between the two. And we get another 50 rupees, which pretty much fills up our pocket. And I don't know if I told you guys this or if this has come up, but in this game, which is really unique about it, is that if you actually pick up uh, rupees out of a chest, it Link will actually put it back. He's like, no, no, I'm not going to be greedy. You know what? This isn't going to fit in my pocket anyways. I'm just going to leave it for when I come back, slash, if another adventurer ever finds it. Because I'm so polite. 
So yeah, so in this cave, if you come across some chests with some um, rupees, you actually leave them behind. So that's why I said you might want to come here with an empty wallet, um, or something, because you're gonna waste uh, supplies otherwise, but I'm not really too concerned with rupees in this game, honestly, um, and if I do come across a problem later, I'll just go ahead and I'll just remember this, which is really nice, because I have video proof and all that good stuff, so... I think we're almost at the end, though. This this should be near the end of this ridiculously just super long cave. I, I don't really know why they put this in here. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, sweet, lots of stuff. And why did they put seeds in that chest? When have we ever used our slingshot outside of Orden? I don't... Uh, it's so useless. Poor slingshot, just getting totally neglected. Has, it has no use for us. I mean, every other piece of equipment we have is just far superior. So bear with me, I think we were almost done, like I said. We're really, really close to the end. You can see we pretty much looped back to the beginning. Um, there's two quarters that almost touched, but they were teasing us, and they're like, nope, it's not a shortcut. You have to go all the way around. And there's an orange ruby we won't be able to grab. So, boo to that. We have 150 rupees that we're going to be leaving behind, so remember that. Again, another walking section. Be really careful. Keys! Get out of my way. Thank you. And, oh my god, I almost hopped into that hole. That would have been awful. That is what he said. Except, hopefully, it wouldn't be awful for him. That would be awful. Okay. Planks. And this is the end of the cave, so... Wolf Link Go! And I'm completely just utterly blind in here. That's wonderful. I probably should have used my lantern first. But meh. There we go. Posol! So that makes, I do believe, all three posols in this area. Um, there's probably about 200, 200, or more than that. There's probably around 400 rupees in this cave, which is a sizable amount. And at the very, very end, you are rewarded with a heart piece. Yeah, so we came all that way for this for this heart piece. Oh, Link, the things you go through. I do not envy you, sir. Luckily, we don't have to go all the way back. It gives us another little nifty portal to go through. Thank God. And then, of course, it just warps you back right to the very beginning, as if you had never gone in there in the first place. There's no, like, second entrance for you to go through, as far as I know. So you have to actually go through that whole entire cave again manually if you want to get anything that you missed. Uh, if you went halfway through and used that teleporter earlier, you'd have to go all the way back to that point and then continue on. Or if you left rupees or, you know, whatever it might be, you have to actually go back for all that stuff. So, that's going to be about it for this video. I just wanted to do all of that in, in one whole video because I knew it was going to take a while. And I seriously never, ever, ever get sick of seeing, uh, seeing Lake Hylia. It's just so gorgeous. So, on that note, guys, I will see you for the next episode of Backtracking. Hope it wasn't too painful for you guys to watch. And hopefully I will see you guys next time.